good evening, everyone. You know, it's it's been an overwhelming day. You know, we were all pleasantly surprised with the number of people who turned up. You know, and they were college students, they were parents with kids. You know, they were people from various businesses. So uh, I'm really impressed with Pune. You know, when we were starting in the morning at 10:30, uh, I think there were more than a thousand people already on campus uh, hearing various talks. Uh, this is something I wanted to. So we also ran a, you know, art competition uh, where students, college students, uh, kids, everyone participated, and uh, I was just uh, roaming around there, and they all have way better art skills than I have. But here are two interesting paintings. One is done by a seventh class student, and if the cameraman can zoom on this painting out here, on how they think about uh, science in India, where uh, there's a rocket and there's the whole solar system which is out there and i i think all of you would can have an interpretation of it but my interpretation is that they think indian science can go to all the planets in the solar system and that's what how you know kids think about where indian science can go and here's another one uh, this is done by a college student uh, which is very interesting because it shows various different facets of science so there's space exploration there's a mobile phone, and I'm reading it from the back, by the way. And you can also see de deforestation. So there's, uh, you know, thoughts about probably policy that we are doing all this science, but what happens uh, to uh, to our forest? And then there's a Google Pay on the bottom uh, left side, right? So there's business. So there's space, there's business, there's policy, and all of it. So I think we are we are with a very evolved audience uh, out here at the India Science Fest. Uh, given that this is the first edition of the India Science Fest, let me tell you a little bit about the story of India Science Fest and how it came about. Uh, I've had the good fortune of being uh, in touch with science now for two decades. And when I say science, I talk about science in the broader term, where it encompasses technology, engineering, pure sciences, which all use the scientific method of inquiry. Uh, most recently, uh, can I see this slide? Do we have? Can you get the slides here, please? I want to see the slide here so that I know which slide you're on. Oops, yeah. So most recently, I will, I've been running an AI lab at a company called Aspiring Minds. And to give you a sense of our learning, uh, my learning from Aspiring Minds, let me take an example of a product which we built in the lab. We built several different products, but this is a product which is to rate spoken English of people, right? So someone speaks on a phone, and you want to automatically tell him or her what is the quality of pronunciation and fluency of the person. Is he or she pronouncing the words right or not? And are there a lot of pauses when he or she is speaking, disfluencies, and so on? And be able to give him a feedback on the quality of spoken English. Why we are interested in this problem is if you look at pretty much all jobs in the knowledge economy today, they need spoken English. And there's considerable evidence that better spoken English means better salaries uh, in the job market. So the scientific question which we asked was that can we use AI to be able to measure spoken English rather than have a human listen to the speech and give a rating? The machine li listens to the speech and gives a rating on the pronunciation and fluency of the person. And guess what? After 18 months of effort, we found out that we could do that. So now we have a tool which is called SWAR, where people can take a test on a phone or an app and instantaneously get feedback on their pronunciation and fluency. What this has done is, one, it created business impact. So this product is used across the world. One of the few products which get created in India and then exported to the world. It's used in India, Philippines, the United States, LATAM by companies like Concentrix, Wipro, which use it across the world. Uh, it's created sub substantial social impact. Uh, people get feedback on their English skills and how they can improve. So a lot of people have hesitation in speaking in English, but they can speak it to this tool and get instantaneous feedback on how good their spoken English is and how they can improve. Moreover, you aggregate data of students across the country and have a policy report which says that what are the English levels of students in various parts of the country, in various institutions, and how you can improve it. Right, so it is creating data which, which policymakers can use. Uh, and, the, and the third thing which it did is create research impact. 
So people who are here from the scientific community uh, would understand what I'm talking about here, but this work led, helped us publish papers in top conferences in the world, like KDD and ACL. Uh, and for the people who don't come from the science community, this really means that the global science community accepted our work as being useful and new, right? But what I would re-emphasize is that the goal of this work was not to write a paper. The goal of the work was to answer a question. But my learning and what we learned from this simple example out here is that science can create big social and economic value, right? And what I have given you is a very tiny example which I have seen clo you know, up close. Uh, but you know, there are various examples. The internet. Internet came out of a DARPA project, uh, research project of interconnecting computers, which we saw as the internet today. It was a government-funded project which ran for many, many years and got converted into internet and created business disruption across the world. And now it's led to the mobile revolution and um, your AI revolution. Uh, and then healthcare, right? So science has made great social impact in improving healthcare outcomes. And I'll just tell you what these two pictures are here about. Uh, but if you look at the rate of life expectancy, quality of life, science has tremendously improved it. I'm sure it has learned, uh, touched all your lives in some way. This is a very interesting couple, couple uh, Rani and Abhay Bang, uh, who have worked in Gacharoli and used the scientific method to reduce infant or mortality rate, right? And this is a study which they have done over years and really shown that in rural areas, how through a process and Anganwadi workers, you can really bring down infant mortality rate. Uh, and this is something, uh, you know, which is worth, is an example of Indian science which is creating social impact. Uh, there's one general myth whenever we talk about, uh, you know, uh, uh, technology and impact that it is the companies and the startups which make all impact, right? But be behind these startups and these companies are research universities which do substantial amount of research and long-term research which finally gets translated through these startups. Uh, for people who are interested, one of the best works on this topic is by a person called Mariana Muzakato, who's written a book on how she believes, she's an economist uh, in UK, and, and she studied and said that how innovation is being governed by research projects and a collusion of the researchers and, and entrepreneurs. So uh, why I make this point is that in India, entrepreneurship is big, but we need to make science big as well if we want real innovation. And just to reiterate the point that asking original questions is very, very important if you want to really have impact of science, uh, then doing it just for the purpose of writing papers or, you know, or, or such things. Uh, so again, reiterating science, for me, I think the big lesson is that science can create big social and economic value, and that's why India should adopt it in a big way, though we have a panel which will discuss this in greater detail. But if you look at uh, India, how India does in science, it's really, really not a very healthy picture. So I wrote a book which came out last year on the science ecosystem in India, and these are some of the uh, illustrative statistics from it. So if you just look at India's high quality research output uh, in areas of science and technology, spanning computer science, AI, neuroscience, all of those, on average, uh, India stands 12th, you know, whereas, uh, of course, USA stands first and China stands second, if you look at the statistics. If you look at disruptive uh, science, science which creates uh, revolutionary value, you know, like uh, the discovery of the helical structure or invention of deep learning, India is even further behind. So our contribution to disruptive research is uh, you know, USS 15 times us and China is seven times us, right? So some people here would think that, oh, China does this low quality manufacturing stuff, but that's really, really not true. If you even look at their contribution in disruptive research, highly cited papers, they are way ahead of us, seven, seven X ahead. Uh, here's another statistics which reflects the same thing, which looks at the number of high productivity research professionals in India. And interestingly, it's the same seven X and 17 X. But if you see below that, uh, if you look at our centers of excellence in research, which are the universities, what you would see is that they are much, much uh, smaller in scale uh, than the US and China-based universities. So we have less centers of excellence, and then their scale is much, much lesser. And to make the last point here, <coughs> again, connecting science with business impact, MIT Technology Review gets out this list of the smartest companies in the world 
uh, every year. And if you look at three, four years of data there, we find that uh, the USA produced one, 105 such companies, which MIT Tech Review thinks are the smartest companies in the world. Uh, China did 14, and India did zero, right? So, so this kind of shows that we might be doing a lot of startups and entrepreneurship, but how much high quality innovation based startups uh, are we doing? Uh, these statistics might be depressing, but this was my conclusion from the book really, that Indian science is a sleeping giant, right? There's something which Alan Border said 25 years back about Indian cricket. But the thing is that we do have all the ingredients to make Indian science great. But what we really need to do, we need to liberalize the science ecosystem like we liberalized our economy in the 90s, right? So there are a lot of institutional barriers today. Science is the way our economy was pre-90s where it was tightly controlled by the government. There was no market as such, and that's why it's, uh, it doesn't move forward. So if we, if we, if we uh, use the same strategy of liberalization of science, we would be somewhere totally different on the statistics uh, which I showed you. Someone had an interesting metaphor for it and he said that, oh, we have unshackled Lakshmi, but we have to unshackle Saraswati. And if we unshackle both Lakshmi and Saraswati, it would be a lethal combination for India's progress. <coughs> <coughs> but how would this happen? You know, how would this movement start? And that's, that's the reason we are here. Uh, that's the reason uh, we are here at India Science Fest. To make this happen, what we really need is will, right? We need political will, we need institutional will, and we need public will. And what I really mean by public will is that the question that how many of you sitting here uh, demand from our government that we need to be world class in science. Right? We demand a lot of things from our government, our newspapers demand a lot of things from the government, but how many of them really demand that we want science to be world class? How many of us want uh, demand that we want India to be a science superpower and not just an economic superpower. Uh, and how many of you sitting here really think that science is important for India, right? Which we'll just discuss uh, in a panel. And if we start asking these questions, uh, I think there can be a change, right? And that's why we have come together here at India Science Festival to build a narrative for science in India. All of us together, where we have the scientists, the policy makers, businessmen, students, entrepreneurs, journalists, and all sorts of people. And that's the real, real, uh, you know, purpose uh, of India Science Fest, right? To create this public will to see India progress uh, in science. So what's the architecture of the Science Festival? I know all of you are attending it uh, since the morning, but I'll give you a quick, uh, you know, quick summary of how we thought about it. So at the core of the Science Festival is talks and discussions. So we have talks on a lot of core science topics like physics, AI, neuroscience, genetics, and so on. But then we see how science interacts with policy, right? So we have a panel uh, which is going to happen tomorrow which, whose title is How to Build an MIT in India, right? Uh, how it interacts with uh, art, which is a very, very interesting uh, question. Uh, and in India, one of the speakers here has this view that in India, we always put art below science, right? And probably that is also a reason why he thinks both art and science don't progress. So that's, that's an important topic uh, for us to discuss. And history of science. We just concluded a panel on the history of science, uh, which was uh, named, uh, you know, Elephant Head for Ganesha. Uh, did Indians know how to transplant organs? And I think we discussed the question. I just left that panel and came, and they were asking the question that is there any use to know the history of Indian science, which I think is another very, very interesting question. I, I'm not trying to answer any of these questions because the festival has to answer these questions. Uh, and then how science leads to social impact. So the talk just before my talk was from Milan Tambe from Google, who was talking about how they have used AI for various social impact projects. Uh, so this is talks and discussions, but outside of it, we have experiments and exhibits. There's exhibits of genetically modified flies. There's a driverless car, which is out here and many, many more. And in the morning, we were having a good problem. There were so many people on each of those exhibits that the exhibitor couldn't manage them. So it's a good problem to have, but it generated a lot of interest and also among school students. Uh, we have games and we have two round tables which we are coming uh, tomorrow. And one of the round tables is on um, how to improve PhD programs in India. 
You know, so my own view is that, you know, PhDs are the most underrated community in this country. You know, no one really cares about them. They have no voice. And if you want to build science, it has to become the most important community uh, in this country. If you look at the US, they have a pop culture of their own. So, uh, you know, some of my friends here might know of, about PhD comics, you know, where there's this all sorts of comics around the lives of PhD students and how thankless a job uh, it is. But I think it's time, India has come to a time that we have to build, start building that culture in India. Uh, and then we have workshops, you know, there are tinkering lab workshops uh, where we think science is for everyone and how we can involve everyone uh, in science. So this is the broad architecture of how we have thought about the India Science Fest. And it's an evolving architecture. I'll reiterate that this is the first edition of the India Science Fest. And as I say, it's a grand experiment and we want to learn from uh, this grand experiment. A lot of people have come together to uh, put the India Science Fest. Uh, I like to mention some. I cannot mention all of them uh, in this limited period of time. Uh, but really, first of all, uh, our program committee, which had Venki Murthy from uh, Harvard University. Harvard uh, Mittal Institute at Harvard University is our academic partner for the festival. Uh, then we have Priyamvada Natrajan from Yale, who had to give a talk here at the India Science Fest, but due to some last minute em emergency could not come. Uh, Sanjay Sarma from MIT, uh, and Nishit Bishnoi, again from Yale, uh, who just, uh, I guess, gave a talk. There are many other people also I would like to uh, mention. Uh, uh, you know, Jayant Udgaonkar, who's the director of IICR, uh, and I must, must, uh, you know, mention his swiftness in, uh, you know, allowing us to use this campus and partnering us uh, and partnering with us to put ISF together. I sent him a mail and in 24 hours he said, I have discussed this, we'd like to support this. And uh, I'll be honest, I thought that it will, uh, you know, ISR being a government institute, it will get stuck in some bureaucratic hurdle. Uh, but that didn't really happen. So many thanks to him. Manoj Kumar from Social Alpha, who's been a believer from the outset. Uh, Tarun, Tarun Khanna from Harvard Business School, who has been a constant support. Uh, Amit Agarwal from NASCOM. Uh, Nitin Pai from Takshila, uh, Ramesh from Stan Life Sciences, who's doing this very interesting experiment where they'll show gene testing uh, tomorrow of volunteers who have been tested uh, here at ISF. Uh, Saurabh Chandra from Ati Motors, uh, who's been exhibiting the driverless car, which is one of the most popular exhibits out here. Uh, Ramanan from Atal Innovation Mission. So we also have a student workshop going uh, in the Audi building as we talk, which is for K-12 students, and they have their own program, which is different from their program. So they have a full two-day program which they are going through, and these are students from the Atal Tinkering Labs. And very importantly, the folks who really put together this show, uh, again, there are a lot of people. There are 40-plus volunteers on the campus right now who have put this show together. Uh, but some I would like to mention quickly is Niyati, Rinkesh, Vishal, Jasmeet, the research team from Aspiring Minds, uh, Meena, Sanjay, Savita from LMSAI, Ankur, I don't know where Ankur associates with, so I'll just leave it at Ankur, but he's the person who just introduced me. Uh, he's taking a break, which was not a luxury at our point of time. So Ankur, who's on break, uh, and Shubham from Leap Labs, who's sitting here and smiling. So these are all some of the people who have helped uh, put uh, ISF together. But what I'll end up with is that <clears throat> one of the last thoughts says that people make or break science for a country, right? So the most important uh, people here in this equation are all of you, right? And uh, as I say, and I say that in my book also, that science is as good as the scientists, the science administrators, and the science students. So it's people which build science, and we all together can build science for India. And if we take the first step towards that with uh, the first edition of India Science Fest, I think it, it is a success. Thank you.